Hello everyone, N3FJZ here with more ZX front panel work. Another interim video, because this feature is not fully finished yet, but I thought I'd introduce you to what changes I've made. Uh, so here we go. Well, um, what I've done is I've implemented a menu structure, and I've put the code up on the website. For you to be able to use the ZX front panel going forward, uh, you're going to have to make sure that you've added the um, the up and down buttons at, at a minimum, and also that you have the enter button also in your circuit. Optionally, you can have the second dial encoder because the second dial encoder and the up and down buttons work. They, they do the same function. So with that, let me give you a demonstration of how this works. Okay, here we are on the, uh, the home screen, as I'm calling it. And um, what I've changed here is that the uh, there used to be a button called GUI page that would step through each one of the GUI screens. Well, I've changed that now that when you press that button once, or you press the button, it will take you to the main menu. And here I'll press the button. It takes you to a main menu. Uh, where in the past, if you were to... Uh, press it repeatedly you'd go to different screens now if you press it again it just stays on the home or the main menu screen and then of course the home key right here if you press that it takes you back to the home screen where you would spend most of your time operating so you got a menu button and of course if you press it repeatedly it doesn't do anything other than keep you on the main menu and you hit the home button uh, it takes you back to the home screen okay uh, so you hit the menu button, takes you to the main menu, and now you will see that if you press uh, the down or up buttons, the hardware buttons, or you turn the second dial encoder, and here I'm turning the second dial encoder, and you turn it counterclockwise to go down, and clockwise to go up and of course with the uh, up and down buttons let's see you press the down you'll go down and it just stops at the last menu item and you go up you go to the first menu item okay now for the enter key so the idea here is you would highlight the menu item that you want to uh, do, for instance, uh, calibration. Then you would hit the Enter key. It takes you to another menu. And then you would highlight the, uh, the screen you want to go to next. Hit the Enter key takes you to that screen. Now I've also implemented uh, what I call screen buttons, which I, I guess you could call them soft buttons. They're not hardware buttons, but they're buttons on the screen. And, um, and I'm pressing the down button, and that will take you to save, cancel, or exit. Now these may change. These are just temporary buttons I have here now. I may I have plans to do more work with the menu, with the actual screens and the buttons. Uh, the menu is pretty much where I want it, other than some of the items don't take you to screen, so they don't exist yet. But the idea here is there's a couple different uh, things that can happen on these uh, screens. Okay, now you're uh, on the tripod now, make it a little bit less distracting. Okay, so you would select the uh, the page that you wanted to uh, 
go to through the menu and then you have the soft buttons on the screen buttons on the lower end of the page and I'm using the navigation keys to go up and down on the screen or you could use the second dial encoder which will do the same thing so uh, the idea here is uh, you would use your uh, upper up and down or the second encoder to go to the item you want to change and then when you were to uh, turn the first encoder it will change that value and you'll notice that when we landed on this page the uh, clock one drive was at four milliamps but if you change that value there's an asterisk that will appear it will tell you that uh, this value is different from the original value when you first landed on the page so essentially it's an unsaved you know this item is not saved yet so you would change your item and then you would come down here and so uh, highlight the save screen button or soft button and then when you press the enter key it will save that value okay also another feature is that uh, here if you change a setting and of course you use your left and right well, for those parameters that do have additional digits you'll hit your left and right button it will select the digit you want to change and then you'll use the first encoder to change that value now you've noticed that there is a, an asterisk uh, indicating that that value is no longer the original and uh, and I think I covered this in, in, in the early the last video but just to bring us up to date if you hit the select the or highlight the cancel button hit the enter key it will take that value back to the original value and if you hit exit takes you back to the home screen so that's what I've done so hit the menu button go to the main menu and then you would s select uh, well there's a usually the top item is going to be go go back to where you came from in this case home screen but hit menu uh, select settings in this case hit the enter key and then there's, there's a back item so that when that's highlighted you hit the enter you'll go back to where you came from and uh, you'll notice that uh, the items well, for instance item three four and five and six are are blue and they have another uh, looks like an arrow indicating that this is another menu whereas number two uh, would be something you probably go to a lot so it's no sub menu there you would just hit the enter key and you would go to the tune screen to tune up your uh, tune up your uh, your antenna tuner match antenna match or antenna tuner uh, in this case there are no soft buttons <clears throat> so if you hit the home key or, the, or if you hit the menu you'll go back to the main menu if you hit the home key you go back to the home screen And the other, in the cases of the other ones that are blue, you'll have an arrow saying that this is there's an additional menu involved there. Now I'm trying to keep this just two levels, where you don't have cascading menus, unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, some items are not implemented. For instance, favorite frequencies don't exist, so you hit the enter key, does nothing. Same way with alarms. Well, I do have a sub menu for alarms and here's where you would set uh, for instance a final transistor temperature you would set the temperature at which you want the uh, transmitter to lock out same way with the SWR and battery voltage alarms or indicators these are all phantom pages there are no there's no logic behind this yet I haven't designed these pages And we have uh, in diagnostics, I think that menu will, name will change to diagnostics slash info. 
uh, you hit that, uh, select that menu item, hit enter. Here you can go to the uh, about page. temperature display that in frequency counter I'll implement a basically make this into a standalone frequency counter synchronized to the GPS satellite pulse here I'll have a world clock in latitude longitude and uh, uh, height above sea level indicators uh, also here this is just something for me for development but what I've been doing is some um, I've also implemented, in addition to the parameter boxes having numeric values, I can now have a list. So it's basically a pick list. And these are just some examples I made up. Here would be um, one of the ideas I want to incorporate into this device or into the front panel is um, indicators, which exist now, but there's no way to change the class. But for instance, uh, if you were a, a general class operator uh, and set that as that you're, I want to have the uh, front panel alert me uh, that if I'm trying to transmit outside of my, my class privilege, it will, you'll have a choice. Maybe it just beeps <clears throat> uh, or you could, you could even go to the point where it just prevents the transmitter from turning on. Those are kind of ideas I have, but that you would need to have a, uh, a selection box that you could have a list of things. So I've, and, and this list is driven by a numeric value in the actual, down in the logic. So it translates a number to a, a word essentially. Uh, same way with the Fahrenheit centigrade uh, selectors. And then I have some basic on off, which is the only values they display. And it turns green and red. So that was a lot of coding behind that. And that's why it's been a while since I've uh, introduced a new video. But I had to do all this work to implement the features because I was getting to the point where I was saying, okay, what's the next feature? And then I realized I have no way of controlling it or there's no convenient user interface. So I had to take couple weeks to sit kind of tear out a lot of code and put in all this uh, all these switch these selector boxes and so forth so and the um, so this all works the code I have up there now it all works the front panel is usable uh, even though some of the features aren't implemented And settings, we have such things as the um, IF frequency and drive, which do exist right now. Same thing with the save, cancel, and exit buttons. And a lot of these screens are still under development, so they have a lot of other things that probably won't be there in the final version. And I also want to put a back button right now I going I can only go back to the main menu of the home screen uh, but going back to settings um, brightness contrast they exist here's where we're talking about the light license class and band alerts and maybe even toying with the idea that you could lock the screen so if you were to say uh, you had it set up at a table at a field day or something you could say lock uh, whatever it is you were displaying. Maybe it's just receive and you didn't want someone to transmit someone who's not an amateur or whatever. I don't know about that. <clears throat> and so for the menu items that don't exist, it doesn't go anywhere. But if for something that does exist, if you hit the enter key, it'll take you to the actual setting. So there it is. Um, again, I'll have the code up on the website. This all works. You can use it to actually power your RF deck. Um, so here we go. 
73 everyone, N3FJZ.